You might not feel like this guy. However, I'm guessing that you have at least a few spelling or grammar errors throughout your narrative. In this video, you're going to learn about seven different mistakes that I've seen you make this past week in your writing. The first one is the one that makes me giggle. This is an error that you should not be making at this point in your academic career. Every time you use I as a word, you need to capitalize it. Let's look at this example. I searched the crowd for my parents. I couldn't find them anywhere. I, anytime I is a word, like here and here, it needs to be capitalized. The second capitalization error that I see you making is proper nouns. These are names of people or objects, cities, and places. So let's look at the error. Maria felt her heart skip a beat when she saw the Statue of Liberty. They were almost to Ellis Island. The proper nouns in the sentence are Maria, because it's a name of a person, the Statue of Liberty, because it's the name of an object or monument, and Ellis Island, because it's a name of a place. At this point, I would love for you to pause the video and go back and read through your narrative. Notice if there are any moments where you're not capitalizing something, like the word I, that needs to be capitalized. Okay, let's look at error number two. Some of you have whole paragraphs that don't have any periods in them. They're acting as like one sentence. Notice when I read this how I'm struggling to find a place to breathe because the writer hasn't put any periods in. The small blind boy took a step forward. I waited a second to create some space between us. The woman behind me didn't um, didn't wait. A wooden suitcase strapped into the back of my leg. I began to topple forward. I caught myself. The small boy turned and snickered. The reason that I'm struggling to breathe there is because the writer hasn't placed in clear breaths for me. When I say a breath, I mean a period. That lets me know that I can pause at the end of a sentence and breathe. So let's look at this example or this error here. I want you to remember that a sentence, a complete sentence, is one subject plus one verb. Or an easy way to remember this is one person or thing doing something. So I want to notice my subjects and my verbs here in, in um, my errors, in my error paragraph. The small blonde boy took a step forward. Okay, do I have a subject? Is there a person or thing doing something? Yes, yeah, so my subject is boy. What is boy doing? He is taking. He took. Okay, so if that's true, at the end of forward, I need to do something. Okay, so if I shove together two sentences, two subjects and two verbs, it's like a train wreck. That's called a run-on sentence. Run-on sentences are a big no-no in writing. So here's the fix. I have a choice to make. I can either put a period between those and make them two different sentences, or I can put a, one of these three conjunctions, and, but, or yet. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a period here. The small blonde boy took a step forward. I waited a second to create some space between us. Okay, so I have, um, I automatically notice another subject that I have. So I is another subject. What did I, person or thing, do? I waited. Okay, so I have another choice to make at the end of us, right? I waited a second to create some space between us. So I can put a period here or and, but, or yet. I'm going to choose a period. That means I'm going to capitalize the woman. So the woman behind me, okay, so there's my subject, the woman, okay? I'm not quite sure what she's doing yet. The woman behind me didn't wait. Okay, so what she's doing or not doing is waiting. She didn't wait. Okay, so I need a period here or one of my conjunctions and I'm going to choose a period and capitalize A. A wooden suitcase jabbed into the back of my leg. Okay, my subject is a suitcase and what did my suitcase do? It jabbed or someone else's suitcase jabbed into the back of my leg. I'm going to put a period here as well. I began to topple forward. I caught myself. Okay, so I have two subjects here, I and I. And my verb is I began to topple and I caught myself. 
Okay, so I need something here. I began to topple forward. Let's see if we can use one of the conjunctions here. I began to topple forward. I'm going to put a comma and I'm going to put, but I caught myself. Move my verb. Okay, lastly, the small boy, I'm going to put a period here. The small boy turned and snickered. Okay, so my, my subject is boy. And I actually have two verbs. He's turning and he's snickering. Okay, so at this point, I would love, I know this one's a little bit trickier, but I would love for you to pause the video. I want you to go back and read your narrative and see if there are any spots where you need to put a period or one of these three conjunctions, and, but, or yet, to give the reader a breath or a pause. Okay, let's look at error number three. Dialogue. This is one we've been talking a lot about, but I'm still seeing you make this error. There are a couple errors that you're making with dialogue. Let's look at a couple. Are you all right, the woman asked. Okay, the error that we're making right here is that we need the punctuation. Are you all right is a question. So I'm going to put punctuation. And remember, I'm always going to put my punctuation inside the quotation marks. Are you all right? The woman asked, period. I'm really hungry, I admitted. Okay, so I want you to notice the other error here. I need to put my punctuation inside the quotation mark. So I'm going to move that comma inside the quotation mark. It's, um, it is not much, but you can have this slice of bread. She handed me a small slice of bread. Okay, here what I want you to notice is that I need a punctuation mark, but this isn't like saying that she said. So I'm going to capitalize this. Okay, so now I have changed, or I've, um, I've corrected all of the errors with my, my dialogue. What I need to do now is I need to make sure that my, every time there's a new speaker, that I add a new paragraph. So here's the first one. This is the woman speaking. So are you all right? The woman asked, and then I respond, I'm really hungry, I admit it. So that's a new paragraph. We'll bring this down so you can really see it. Okay, I'm really hungry, I admit it. Okay, and then the woman's going to speak again. Okay, so what I want you to notice is that every time there's a new speaker, I create a new paragraph. Here, when she says she handed me a small slice of bread, she's not speaking, there's not a new speaker, so that's the same paragraph. Okay, I want you to pause the video now and go look at your dialogue and see if you can change any of those errors to your dialogue, whether that's putting punctuation inside the quotation mark or creating a new paragraph. Okay, let's look at the final four, five, six, and seven. So number four is short paragraphs. I'm still noticing that some of you have these gigantic paragraphs. I just want to remind you to go back and to revise that so that your paragraphs are no more, like at max, it should be five to six sentences. I would expect most of your paragraphs, however, to be two to three sentences. I also want for you to think about how many times you use said for dialogue. The woman said, I said, she said. Can you change said to something else? If you Google other words for said, you'll find a whole list of different ways you can say said. Screamed, yelled, stated, said frighteningly, right? You can even add an adverb to that. Number six is there, there, and there. I'm seeing you make some errors with the spelling of these three words. There is pointing out, like if I'm pointing out something and I'm giving a location of something, it's the T-H-E-R-E. -E. There is a banana. I'm pointing at the banana. I'm saying there is a banana. That's T-H-E-R-E. -E. If it's possessive, if I'm saying it's their banana, don't touch it, it's theirs, they possess that banana, it's their banana, it's T-H-E-I-R. If, um, if it is a contraction, they are, 
and I'm sticking that those two words together like this, they are eating bananas, and instead I'm saying they're eating bananas, that's T-H-E-Y apostrophe E-R. Okay, let me remind you, there is like saying the location of something. There is a banana. There, T-H-E-I-R, is possessive. It's their banana. And T-H-E-Y apostrophe R-E is they are, they're eating bananas. The people are eating bananas. There. The other spelling error that I see you making is it's and it's. I-T-S without an apostrophe is when it is a possessive. Okay, so just like there, T-H-E-I-R, this is possessive. Um, how do you peel a banana? Start with its stem. The banana stem is where you start to peel the banana. Okay, I-T apostrophe S is it is. It's that contraction. It is a yellow banana. It's a yellow banana. Okay, right now, this is your last pause. I want you to pause the video and I want you to go back and see if there are any of these four errors that you can change or revise in your narrative. 